Nutritional psychiatry is the application of food and nutritional science to brain health. So when we think about mental health conditions like depression and anxiety, yeah, things like schizophrenia, PTSD, we, we have robust treatments for all of those. What do we do in terms of advising patients on, on what to eat? And then when we think about patients who, or people who are, you know, where I think a lot of Americans are, right? That you've maybe got some symptoms or maybe there's some mental health concerns in your family and you're looking for things that you can do to improve your mental wellness. Nutrition is like one of the most important levers that we have in terms of overall lifestyle health that we know so many Americans are making the wrong choices and, and are eating foods that are really bad for health. And we focus a lot on like obesity and diabetes and the ways that, you know, our current food choices inform those health conditions. But there's this all this new nutritional psychiatry science, which really looks at how food and food choice and dietary patterns influence our risk of illnesses like anxiety and depression. And then really cool science about how Maybe in helping patients with their diet, we can improve their outcomes clinically with uh, mental health concerns. It's almost kind of earth shattering because you're right. I mean, we all talk about these things independently, but not really together. So you've learned a lot. It sounds like you're, you're smart and you read data and you get educated and you're also doing it hands-on with an organic farm. Is there true evidence that shows that food choices impact our mental health? Yeah, for sure that there are. You know, part of the thing about nutritional psychiatry is really thinking that all the data right now that's really strong is about augmenting treatment. It's kind of what we do in, in my clinic, the Brain Food Clinic. It's, it's also really in, in my new book, Eat to Beat Depression and Anxiety, kind of how I try and talk about it, that when you think about beating depression and anxiety, there are lots and lots of things when you see someone do that, that they bring to the table. You know, even if people have a response to medications or even if really psychotherapy helps them, when really people kind of get into full remission from an illness, they're often they're often marshalling a lot of different aspects of their life. You know, their sleep hygiene's improving, their relationships usually are improving. Um, and, and nutrition is kind of one really important aspect of that. And so the data has come out, it's been really interesting. It started out with correlational data showing that populations that eat a, a dietary pattern that's more Mediterranean ty uh, style, or another way to put that is just a traditional, it's called a traditional dietary pattern. So if it's a Japanese diet or a Norwegian diet, just diets that are made of more whole unprocessed foods, folks tend to get less depression and less anxiety. Um, particularly then what's been interesting is this increase in the randomized clinical trials where individuals with clinical conditions like depression, are being given some form of dietary counseling and to augment their treatment. There have been a number now, uh, I guess four trials doing this, um, uh, and, and they've been positive. And it's been really interesting because, you know, one, it's established, because these are some of the first trials ever that have been done, and it establishes that one, in a mental health setting, you can talk to patients about food and really change their behavior. And then two, it establishes like it's not. It's not like crazy wild changes. It's, you know, eating more fish, eating more legumes, eating fewer processed foods and sugars. It's not like some crazy wild mix of, you know, saffron plus nutmeg plus turmeric, you know, shaken, not stirred. It's, it's, it's stuff that in some ways, you know, as you said earlier, it's surprising. But also what's surprising is that it's a lot of it is, I wouldn't say just common sense. There's a few tips and tricks, but a lot of it is around common sense eating of getting back to, you know, the foods that, that we grow on farms and we fish out of the ocean um, and, and to move away from the foods that have really, you know, kind of obviously now contributed to the burden of chronic illness, both mental health-wise and physical health-wise in America.